Okay, so we're going to be creating this speech bubble effect here. You can see that we've got a container with a slight border radius here, and then we've got a little triangle on the left-hand side uh, just to finish it off. So we're going to look at doing this within something like a comment system. So for example, you might have lots of different comments, and that would produce an effect like this. So we'll be doing that, and then you can literally just take the effect and do whatever you want with it. So let's get started on building this effect. So to start things off, we'll build the markup. You can see I've just basically got a HTML5 document layout here, and I've got a main.css style sheet, which I've linked in here. Uh, obviously, if you're incorporating this into your website as it is at the moment, you'll probably already have a style sheet. So let's create the markup that we need then. I'm gonna create a wrapper for all of these comments. The reason that we're doing this is we're not going to tie the bubble down to only have an effect um, in its uh, as itself. So it means that you might have a comment list or something else, and you can incorporate the class into this, which will then transform that list and give you the effect. If that doesn't make too much sense, don't worry. We'll look at how, how we're going to do this in a moment. So I've created a comments wrapper on the outside and then I've created a comment wrapper on the inside for my paragraph of text. So I'm just going to say this is a uh, paragraph of text. So this can be duplicated so we can have multiple instances of this and this will give you an effect like this. So we've just got normal text down the page. So we'll just work on one for now and you can duplicate this afterwards. Over in our main.css, uh, let's just change the background color to a gray just so we can create this white effect here. Um, so we'll just change this to a nice gray. And then we're going to set the comments wrapper to just a fixed width. This uh, can change depending on whether your site's responsive or not. And we'll also then start the comment within them comments. So we'll give these a width of 100%, uh, just so they fill the container. And we'll also give a margin bottom of 20 pixels. So that's how it now looks. Uh, there's nothing really much change except the background, but we've now got, if we just inspect this, a um, padding on the bottom of 20 pixels. So what we're now going to do is um oh actually quickly we could probably remove the paragraph within them comments so let's just have a just a 10 pixel on the bottom of that paragraph so we're going to create this bubble class now and this can be applied to any container really and and that will transform that into a speech bubble so we can reuse this effect so we're just going to create a bubble class what we can now do is apply this to here which will then transform each of these comments into a speech bubble. Rather than just tying this down to the comment class, it doesn't make sense then if you need to reuse it for, say, a forum post and, and you have a class of post or something like that. So we'll create this in isolation so it can be reused. The first thing that I'm going to do is set the positioning of this, and that's because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating the triangle as an absolutely positioned element. Now what that means is we can place it anywhere we want, and that's the little point on the speech bubble. So because we need to place this as an absolute, uh, position this absolute, it means that the outer container needs to be a position relative in order to contain that element. Um, if you're not too sure about this, we'll see how this works in a moment. So we're going to set the position to relative on the uh, on the bubble. We're also going to set the background to white, and this will just give us a good idea of how things are looking. There we are. So we need to add some padding in here, and we need to change the border radius as well. There's not really much to do in terms of the main container styling. So let's give this uh, 20 pixels padding. Let's change the color to maybe uh, a light, uh, a lighter black, if that makes sense, and. Um, We'll go ahead and set the border radius as well, so to three pixels. And we'll also set the margin left to 20 pixels. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because at the moment we don't have enough room on this side to contain the uh, point that we're going to need. So if I just take this and I remove the margin on the left, we're not going to have enough space for that point. You might even want to incorporate a user's uh, avatar in here or their profile image, whatever you want to call it. So we're done with that now. We're done with the main bubble container. 
what we're now going to use is a pseudo element and that's after so we say bubble and then we use a colon and we say after what this does is it will allow us to place content after the element immediately after the element so I'm gonna say content empty now we need to do this but I could actually just say test for example and you'll see what this does it places element uh, it places content at the end of this element so we can see the element here in our element inspector we've got the paragraph and then we've got this pseudo after element here the reason it shows a double colon is we can actually use uh, double colon notation in here it, it doesn't really make too much of a difference it does the same thing so we've now got this um, what we now need to do though rather than entering text as the content we want to start styling this up to create a triangle with CSS and that will become our point so the first thing I want to do is I want to give this a display of block um, I then want to position this absolutely now this is what, what I spoke about uh, before so if I just return to entering content uh, test content in there uh, you can see that uh, the position absolute is not moving outside of the container but if I go ahead and get rid of the position relative on the main bubble that when we add things like left zero and top zero it comes all the way outside of here let's just put back our position relative and that's then stays inside so we want to keep that control here so we're not going to be saying left zero and top zero. We'll set them in a moment. We do need left and top properties. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to set the width to zero and the height to zero. I'm just going to pull this down a bit because this just relates to the creation of the triangle. And what we do here is we use uh, the borders uh, to basically uh, create a border and then push it through the element that basically forms a triangle. Uh, it's just a common way of, uh, of creating triangles with CSS. So we're gonna set the top and the bottom border to transparent in color. And we'll give these, I played around with these measurements, but you can basically choose whatever you want to change the shape of the triangle, the general size of it. So we're gonna use the border shorthand property. Uh, and this is going to be uh, eight pixels, solid and transparent. And we're also gonna set the border bottom to exactly the same thing so transparent now what we do to actually create the triangle effect because this has done nothing really in fact let's get rid of that test this has done nothing at all really um, if we just take a look at the element it's just nothing at the moment um, but what I'm going to do is I'm initially going to set this to a black triangle just so we can see it against the white so what we now need to do is we need to decide which way the triangle is pointing because it's pointing left we need to set the border on the right to something like 15 pixels again I just played around with this property and we need to set that then to an actual color and that will push through and it will create our triangle effect so now that we've got this we can position this so it sits here and we obviously need, then need to change it to white so let's change the uh, positioning of this so we'll say left we want to be minus 15 pixels the reason it's minus 15 pixels is because we've got the width of the triangle set to 15 pixels so that will just sit nicely on the edge then and then we obviously want to set a top property uh, for it to maybe come down 15 pixels just to keep things even so then that sits nicely there so now what we can do is we can change this to white and there we go we've got our CSS speech bubble